this is special. This is the future of astronomy. And I am aware of how sensationalist that statement is, but just allow me 22 seconds of your time to showcase how easy it is to capture the cosmos with this. No hands. And there we go. Zero to 700,000 stars in just under three minutes. This is the Dwarf 2 telescope. And in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing what this tiny telescope is capable of. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. This is the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope. It is very rare that I get my hands on a telescope that is brand new. So Dwarf Lab have sent me this telescope after sending me their first variation, which was the tiny scope that I reviewed in a video a couple years back and was capable of seeing the moons of Jupiter and star clusters like the Pleiades up close. It was fairly impressive for the price, but the majority of the feedback from that tiny scope seems to be that it can't do enough. You want it to do more. You want your telescope to be capable of imaging more objects than just the brightest things in our night sky. And that is where the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope comes in, because this is no ordinary telescope. The most spectacular feature of this telescope is that it possesses the ability to find deep sky objects with pinpoint precision. It also tracks the objects and then best of all, stacks your long exposure images for you within its app. It is extremely lightweight and clearly very portable, but interestingly, it is being advertised strongly as a two-in-one telescope. I was very surprised to learn that it has the ability to track moving animals, which is actually quite impressive. And it is worth mentioning that as we increase the focal length of our telescopes, our tracking needs to be even more precise. So the fact that this telescope has a focal length of 675 millimeters, despite being so tiny, is amazing. This means that we can really push it in terms of imaging smaller and fainter deep sky objects. I am in the process right now of making a video in which I'm using my smartphone to image the night sky. Now I'm not talking about wide field images of the Milky Way and just doing time lapses of our night sky. I'm actually referring to taking images of deep sky objects using my smartphone, which sounds impossible, especially considering the telephoto lens doesn't have much room to magnify your image in a clean way, shall we say. Now this telescope is facing a similar problem. And when you picture telescopes, you picture long optical tubes. So to see the telephoto lens just here with very limited room behind it, you might be a bit concerned about the quality of the image that's going to be produced. Well, actually the Dwarf Lab 2 telescope makes use of some very nifty technology. The light that comes in is then reflected further down the tube and then received at the back end here in which the camera sensor then takes a photo, which is actually really cool. I am really impressed by that. There are two packages to choose from. The classic package contains the essentials and the deluxe package includes an additional battery as well as a filter set that will allow you to image the sunspots on the surface of our sun and bring out more detail when imaging certain deep sky objects. Right, so allow me to just briefly run you through the process of astrophotography when I first got into it. The first thing you'd have to do is bring all your equipment into the garden. So we have a heavy duty tripod, a go-to mount, and then we have our large telescope tube. We'd have to put it all together, most likely in the dark conditions that we're facing right now. If it's cold, you're in for a very rough night because pretty much all of the gear is made out of metal. So you best make sure you wrap up warm, but then if you're wearing extra thick gloves, it makes it hard to fine tune and tighten all the screws up. So once you've pulled your back by lifting all the equipment outside into your garden and setting up and also when you've managed to navigate the minefield that is your dog's poop you will then have your telescope set up now we have to turn it on and once we do we are asked for our gps coordinates which of course everyone has memorized into their brain and if you don't you have to go inside now to your computer and look these up and then write them down on a piece of paper come back outside type them in and then once you do that you are asked to give it your elevation which again we all know off by heart then you've got to tell it if you are in daylight saving times what time zone specifically you are in and then once you've done all that it's going to ask you to point the telescope at up to three different stars so we can get an idea of what your location is here on planet Earth. It's a nightmare process that can take up to an hour just to get going. And then once you are finally going, you then have to start imaging your targets. You have to, you have to plant your DSLR camera inside the eyepiece holder and start taking long exposure images. So it's a no brainer that the Dwarf 2 telescope takes out literally all of that struggle, all of those worries about stepping in dog poo because you just pull it out of your bag, plonk it onto a nice solid flat surface and just let it do its job. That's it. Very simple. This is precisely how long it took for Dwarf Lab to get set up and start tracking an object. 
the app interface is extremely easy to use. And although I said at the start of this video, you could be taking long exposure images of objects in under three minutes, the actual time it turns out is exactly half of that. It takes just 90 seconds to go from inside a carrier bag to imaging an island containing one trillion stars known as the Andromeda Galaxy. When I said this was special, I meant it. And if that wasn't impressive enough, it's what follows that really cements this as being a special telescope for me. As I press capture on this astro mode, it starts taking 15 second exposures of the target I'm looking at. Now referring back to my old astrophotography setup, I would take lots of long exposure photographs and then once the night was over, I'd pack all my equipment up, get back inside, have a cup of tea to warm up, put my SD card into my computer and load all of these images into a stacking software that allows me to create a final resultant image that looks nice and pretty. That in its own right can take beyond an hour. But unfolding before my eyes right now, I am seeing that process be completed. Every picture that this telescope is taking, it is stacking it in front of me. I am witnessing live stacking. So I'm seeing my image get better and better with every single frame. And then once I'm done, once I've decided that's it, looks pretty good, I'm happy with that. I just press stop capture and I have my resultant image saved onto the micro SD card in the telescope itself and available to download onto my phone immediately. This is of course very dependent on how long you want to image for, but if I said I want to pop outside right now and have a look at the Dumbbell Nebula, then I could bring my bag with this telescope outside and I'll be able to take an image of the Dumbbell Nebula within three minutes. All right, now for the most important part of the video, the images. They speak for themselves, but allow me to add a small bit of context towards each of them. This is our nearest galactic neighbour, and as opposed to being a mere blurry patch of light, we can make out an impressive amount of detail. This is the great globular cluster in Hercules, and it's probably my favourite image out of them all. Amongst a sea of stars, we have this ultra-dense collection of 700,000. Beautiful. The Eagle Nebula, home to the Pillars of Creation, almost too difficult for the Dwarf II to make out. M33, the Triangulum Galaxy, nearby to Andromeda, Quite a fun target that's also quite large. As opposed to the Pinwheel Galaxy, which appears relatively smaller in our night sky. Another one in which we are pushing the telescope's capabilities. This one's tricky. It's the Dumbbell Nebula. It's easy to get the central blue colour in your images, but much harder to get the red and the outer fainter shades of blue. Any idea what this object is? It's referred to as the Heart Nebula. It's almost too big for this telescope's field of view and it could have definitely used some more images in order to bring out this red nebulosity. Which is the case for a lot of these targets, such as the Western and Eastern Veil nebulas. I captured 80 to 115 second exposures, which translates to about 20 to 25 minutes of total exposure time, which really isn't much. Once the skies are clearer, I'll try again to bring out more detail in these objects by imaging them for a few hours instead of just 20 minutes. The Pleiades star cluster rises above the horizon at about 4 in the morning right now, so there's a very small window to image it. This is again 20 minutes worth of exposures, but even with that you can still make out the faint veil of dust enveloping these young stars. And lastly, we have a couple of two for ones. The first is M81 and M82, Ode's Nebula and the Cigar Galaxy, a fun contrast in shapes of a galaxy. Then we have the Whirlpool Galaxy, which I have forever struggled to take a nice image of with my 8-inch Newtonian telescope. But it has to be said, the tiny little dwarf telescope has done a remarkable job here. The weather in Britain this summer has been poor, so I've been having to wait patiently for windows in which there are clear skies. There have been one or two nights where I've been outside for three hours and only actually managed to get 20 minutes worth of images. But this is my collection so far. And with autumn fast approaching, I'm eagerly awaiting the chance to test this telescope out on the Orion Nebula and Horsehead Nebula. I'll be sure to post further results to my Instagram page. Right, what are the limiting factors? Besides the obvious point that this has a very small focal length due to its compact size, the image quality is, I'd say, good, but not great. Yeah, I'd compare the quality of these images to what I was able to capture with my Canon 1000D about 10 years ago. That's a similar quality to what I'm seeing right now appear on my phone. I have very poor memory because I seem to remember my first stacked image of the Andromeda Galaxy being mind-blowingly amazing, but apparently not. 
The setup I used back then cost £750, whereas a Dwarf 2 is clearly capable of capturing much more. Both of these images were roughly an hour's worth of long exposures. The key difference here is that a Dwarf 2 telescope is less than half the price of my old setup, and in terms of creating these images, is about five times quicker and easier as well. I like things that make astronomy and astrophotography more accessible. They make it easier. You don't have to spend hours fiddling around in the garden. So in summary, I don't think people generally say it's about telescopes, but this is a very cool gadget. This is fantastic for showcasing a night sky. If someone came around to your house and you said, oh yeah, this is my telescope, they wouldn't believe you for starters. They'd be like, it looks like a Nintendo Switch. You can show said person within the space of three minutes that it is a telescope and it is capable of capturing the night sky. It's incredibly quiet. Pretty much doesn't make a sound at all. Yeah, overall, I'm just, I'm really impressed by this. Like, I actually cannot believe how good this is. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to buy a telescope, then please use the affiliate link in the description below.